All right. Good to have you, dear brother. And greeting to everybody else. Uh, let's start our time with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to have this time of free discussion questions with the students. Um, and may you bless all of them um, in their ministry, in their work, uh, with their family. Thank you for your protection for Brother uh, Anil and his family in this whole uh, uh, storm situation in Texas. May you watch over him and everybody else. And bless all the dear students in this course. Uh, and um, may we be able to put our full energy to learn about other cultures and how we can uh, share the gospel in a way that is clear with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, as I explained before, these classes are, I'm not going to repeat the lectures because they are recorded from last year, even the years before. So you can watch them be here. I wanted to um, focus more on some of the topics that I think are crucial, uh, maybe even one, uh, and also anything that's not clear for you, for students. Uh, so, But before doing that, let me just uh, take a look at the syllabus and... Uh, here, okay, <clears throat> we are okay. We are here, session three, and uh, these are the topics that are mentioned in the lecture cultural assumption, cultural differences, gender, sexuality, production, and exchange tension between how to handle crisis, tension over goals and, you know, uh, tension over how, how different people use time. So, uh, and these are the, you know, chapters that you read. Again, chapters five and six from all the three books uh, by Hebert, Howell, and Langenfelter. And also then take the quiz number three uh, that study guide is provided and discussion number three. And for graduate students, also submit an evaluation book report on Jesus through the Middle Eastern eyes, chapters 21 through 32. Uh, again, I want to mention for quizzes, when you answer the study guide, uh, you know, I, I encourage you to do that definitely and type your answer. You can take that sheet, like a <laughs> cheat sheet to, to your quiz or exam, but just don't copy and paste, but you can have that available for you to answer the question on the quiz. And um, and the, the for the evaluation book report, uh, uh, I have it here, Evaluation Book on um, uh, Cross-Cultural Conflict by Elmer and Jesus Through the Middle Eastern Eyes. Uh, four pages. Uh, I don't mind if it's more than that, but at least four pages. Trubian format. Again, uh, have a summary. It's a strength weakness and very important what you learn from it in your life and ministry. Um do you have any question, brother? Anything I can explain? Yes, um, I have a question regarding the books. Is, I don't have any of those books. Is this books uh, available through li library or uh, ordered it from outside? Um, I don't. Have, I'm not. I don't know if the library has them, but you can order them from Amazon. Okay. All right. Uh, is is the is there a problem for you on that? No, no. Um, in the beginning, when I was checking, you know, before the class started, like you know, two two weeks ago, I was checking for the books to order. I couldn't um, find specifically which book it was uh, to order. So, 
If I order, I order this one, Evaluation Book Report and Cultural Conflict. Oh, okay, the books that you need to have, you know, they are mentioned here. Uh, these are the four books. Oh, these are, oh, okay, okay. They're, they're all mentioned here. Okay, Our all right. Textbook, Hebert, Howell, uh, okay. and... Uh, so it's it's my mistake. I think I did not go and okay. look in and this one. These three uh, is, is for everybody. Um, uh, this cross cultural conflict and uh, uh, Jesus through Middle Eastern eyes are for graduate students, but they are all there. And, okay. Uh, all right. I, I would order right away and yeah. get started on that. And yeah. I think Amazon can give you an option of um, speeding up the process, all but right. I can work with you. So, you know, if you need a time to receive the book and do the your assignment, you know, I I I cooperate with you, okay. Oh, right. And also for other students, please don't give up. Please turn in your assignments and uh, communicate with me, okay. Right. Any other question? Um, uh, I was going through today's lessons, uh, lesson number three, uh, the interesting topic on gender and sexuality. I think that's so valid in this culture in which we live in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the our PowerPoint. Um, okay, here. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> especially today, uh, that's a very um, hot issue. And unfortunately, um, it's so unfortunate that America is going through such a confusion um, regarding gender and gender role, uh, where the scripture um, has made it very clear. Now, um, let me, uh, you know, this is a good question. Is gender change by medical operation biblical? What do you think? Let me ask you that question. You know, I, I remember some t I, last semester, a semester before, I took a philosophy uh, class in SCS. Uh, I forgot the name of the professor. Dr. Ward? I, Dr. Ward, yeah, yeah. So um, in his class, we were having a discussion, and he said uh, gender uh, is expressed in our soul before it manifests in the body. Um so that was uh, so that stuck with me um, in that sense. So, so in looking in that aspect, I don't think whatever we modify in our body does change the very gender we are born with. I, I, I may be wrong, but that's probably what I think. Okay, no, I understand. It's just that my idea here was uh, uh, let me correct that. Practice mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, let me just uh, say something about because it just I know personally a case that and I I understand just by some you cannot prove something by some uh, specific cases <laughs> that's more like a inductive reasoning um, <clears throat> but. In, in cases that a person is born with deformity, that's what I'm talking about more. Maybe I should have made the question clear. There are deformity. And like I knew of an individual. Uh, Matthew Matthew 12 talks about that, right? Uh, Unix. Oh, yeah. Unix. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, good point. Very good point. But like the, here was an individual uh that was born uh, as a man, I mean, outside you, but even in a physical appearance and, uh, you know, and his um, uh, sexual uh, uh, organs, there were deformity. And he had a, he, he was in Iran. He came to fate. He had a very difficult time. Uh, in back in Iran because that, that's a very close society doesn't accept these things very easily until he left the country and eventually he came to Canada 
And he asked guidance from me, and I talked with some other pastors, uh, prayed about it, uh, tried to find an answer. And one pastor uh, gave me this uh, counsel that maybe he should, you know, the best thing to do is uh, for people like him, that, for, or him or her, that it's not the question that the person wants to change just because of some desire, but rather because of the physical deformity. Mm. They go to the to hospital or to a doctor and the hospital don't just do the change, do, do the operation. What they do, they, uh, they take a, a DNA test, a genetic test, mm -hmm. and they chromosome test to make sure uh, to find out which, uh, whether male or female uh, uh, spectrum. I, I'm not quite fam know what how they uh, do the test, but it's a test that basically shows whether this person has the you know the his or her chromosome is more toward male or toward female, and then based upon that they do an operation. So uh, this is what we, we recommended to him. And he did that, but also, I also shared that with him, that uh, he changed to a woman that, and some people may not agree with me, I said that, you know, but you cannot marry. This is, uh, you know, you cannot marry a man based upon this operation. First of all, the operation cannot uh, create an embryo for you. You know, you cannot uh, uh, bear children. Uh, and and the operation is basically so that you can live in a society without all the hassle that you used to have. But my understanding was you cannot marry because uh, it's better not to do that. Um, maybe <laughs> maybe one day I'd be I'd be proven wrong. But I just thought. I, at this, at this, up to this point, I'm not convinced that uh, he that now has become she can marry a man uh, without violating biblical principles. Yeah, so, I agree with that. I think that's a valid point. Yeah, yeah. Because... But you can have the operation so that you can be free from, you know, the you know the problem of. Um, fitting into the society and all that. Right. Yeah, not like today's today's world where people have lived half of their life as uh, one gender and then they realize that we want to change it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wrong because that is, you know, and there's no medical, there's no physical reason. Actually, they, uh, they uh, create the problem you know, this individual had a problem from birth, but these guys, these people create a problem to justify their gender change. So uh, uh, what is there anything else you would like to talk? I just, I have one topic I wanted to discuss. Yeah. Um, would you be able to, I was, I was reading the difference between gender and sexuality uh because i know uh, uh, a lot of uh, people tend to uh, mix up with that and and then uh, then make a statement like gender is uh, that's neutral and it can be changed anytime but I, but i think no. they are different no no you see basically uh, looking at it from uh, uh, is defined as, as defined by God in the Bible, man is created uh, men and man and woman. Uh, we do, we don't have a third option, and um, um, you know you got to remember uh, um, that some of the things in our textbooks, uh, even though these writers are <laughs> supposedly Christians. Um, uh, but uh, some of their 
statesman, I disagree on some areas uh, regarding biblical gender role. Uh, but I believe God has created man, male and female. And uh, and I do realize, like the example I just gave, uh, individual may be born with deformity, but that's a physical deformity. You know, it is not something that a person learns or accures or adapt because of uh, being exposed uh, to uh, the ideas of uh, uh, homosexual behavior or, uh, you know, ideas of a gender change. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, that, you know, except for the exception of people are born with a physical deformity, um, then, uh, you know, only in that case, like the example that I just gave you, uh, I can recommend uh, under supervision of the hospital or doctor with approval after they do their chromosome uh, checking, uh, there can be a, uh, the, the operation so that that person can um, live um, more comfortably in a society. But those are, you know, you cannot use, you know, it's always wrong. It's always bad to use exceptions and out of exception to make a norm, a rule for everybody. But no, I think it's... Uh, it's clear. The scripture has made it clear, man and woman. And uh, people who grew up half of their life as man or a woman, and then they want to change, it's usually, it's a accurate uh, behavior through exposure to, uh, you know, this homosexual uh, lifestyle. Uh other thing I wanted to mention, you know, even you know, some of the, um, in some cultures, you got to realize the gender status. It doesn't mean that it's right, actually, actually it's wrong, but the gender status of uh, female in uh, countries such as Afghanistan, that they are, they have to be a burqa that you can see in this picture. Um, um that's more like enslavement of women than anything uh, have anything had to do with uh, modesty and purity. Um, um, uh, so, but you got to be sensitive toward uh, these kind of issues in other cultures. Um, you know, I I I caution uh, to align uh, Christian faith with a movement that they want to uh, get rid of um, um, uh, compulsory covering in Islamic countries. Even though I am not in favor of compulsory covering hijab or compulsory covering for in Islamic countries, but I, I don't think we should uh, force it, nor uh, we, can, we cannot align the gospel with that position. Uh, uh, you know, something like burqa is definitely wrong, even among the Muslim, because it, it prevents uh, a, a woman to have any normal uh, um, um, functions in a society. But uh, and even uh, there are Muslims who do not approve uh, the practices of um, these uh, uh, Taliban and the leaders in Afghanistan or in Iran, uh, but. If, if, for example, I worked with uh, 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 Christians in Iran, underground churches there, that, you know, if in your society they ask, they want you to cover your hair, uh, I do it. I mean, I recommend them to do it. Don't don't make a big, big issue out of it uh, just because of that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention uh, in this whole was this area, the topic of communication process, uh, because that's so important 
in uh, in missionary work, and it's a, a important part of the cultural anthropology, uh, how we communicate. Uh, communication always uh, starts with a sender, and I believe I have a yeah I have a video also, uh, a sender sending a message, and we want that message to uh, received correctly to the receiver, so. Uh, we send a message to a medium. That medium can be um, radio, can be TV, can be internet, can be a book, can be a lecture, can be just a casual talking. But uh, whatever it is, we the we have a content. We encode that, and then the receiver has to decode that to understand it. And then it's important that for the receiver to give us feedback so that we can make sure that uh, he or she understood correctly what we were trying to communicate. Uh, uh, and here can be this, uh, there, there can be static, you know, I don't have it in the graph. Statics can create a problem in the process of encoding and decoding. By static, what I mean is a false assumption in a culture. For example, I as a, a sender, I want to share the gospel uh, with a Muslim. So I talk to that individual about Jesus to be the son of God. So that concept, uh, Jesus is the son of God. Uh, and let's say I'm talking to that person face-to-face uh, -face through the medium, just uh, normal talking. Uh, I am encoding that concept in the words, Jesus is the son of God. But the receiver, when decodes that, can get a, another meaning, uh, a wrong meaning from what I originally intended it to be. Uh, most of the time, they may think that we are talking about uh, as some kind of a physical relationship that Jesus is the son of God in a physical sense. That's not what we mean. Or maybe we are blaspheming. Maybe we are confusing uh, the God with the, you know, Greek mythology. Uh, so the person gives us a feedback and then through the feedback, you know, those issues about uh, the physical uh impression about being Jesus being the physical son of God uh, or, or all that, those are the static that creates a problem in this process of communication. And in order, the way to overcome those the static is through feedback by asking question. Um, so it's always important to ask question, share the gospel, but then ask question, do, what, what do you understand? Would you tell me about, uh, do you understand what I'm saying about Jesus is the son of God? Uh, and then you can see where in this process, static created problem. And then to clarify and resend the message with more clarification. Uh, let's look at this video. It's a, it basically is what I just shared today, just shared now, but that's, it's a good one. Let's just look at it. The sender is the individual group or organization that needs or wants to share information with some other individual group or organization. The receiver is the individual group or organization for which the information is intended. The message is the information that the sender needs or wants to share with other people. A message is clear when it contains information that is easily interpreted or understood. Once the sender has decided what the message is, the next step in the process is encoding translating the message into symbols or language that the receiver understands. Once a message is encoded, it is transmitted to the receiver through some medium. The medium is the pathway through which an encoded message is transmitted to a receiver. Just as senders have to translate their ideas or messages into a form that can be to the receiver, receivers have to make sense of the messages they receive. Decoding is interpreting or trying to make sense of a sender's message. After decoding the message, the receiver has to respond to it 
and start the feedback loop. The receiver must first decide what message to pass on to the original sender. If receiver properly interpreted the initial message and common understanding has been reached, the communication process is complete. Okay, so you see, even in that example, I could think of it, you know, parts of it that they don't mention is the role, the role of a static. Uh, static, even in that message that the, the uh, message was, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? Uh, well, I can think of one static, again, in the other cultures. If you ask, if me as a man go and ask a woman uh, that I don't know, uh, how are you doing? Uh, the static in that process might be maybe not in the here, but in Middle Eastern countries usually will be, okay, why this stranger asked me this question? Uh, maybe he has something else in his mind. Maybe he's trying to, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, start a relationship with me or has some other intention. So, so those are the static that you got to be aware, and usually you get it uh, in the in the feedback. <laughs> usually, when there is such a misconception, the feedback will be negative. So then you can clarify and uh, talk more and explain more about the message that you want to communicate. Uh, the static can be culture. Of culture assumptions. Yeah, yeah. culture assumption. Uh, sometimes that can be the mega culture that covers a whole country. And sometimes it can be the personal culture. You may talk to a person, uh, ask, in, like in this example, uh, and a simple question, you know, how are you doing uh, here? You, you ask that question here in America that there are not those kind of static problems like in the Middle East, but the person may have a some kind of personal, you know, because we have our own personal culture too. And she may, if it's a woman, she may think again, why this guy is asking me this question? Uh, what is behind his uh, asking me how, how I'm doing? And so... <laughs> Again, even in that case, you can overcome that problem with feedback, answering, asking questions. All right, uh, let me see if there are anything else. Uh, uh, um, Error message, media, paramedia, static, you know, a barrier to communication. Anything that might distract people from receiving the message, and it can be personal or uh, coming from the culture and the society. Uh, context is very important. Uh, divorce is used in drama, have different meaning when they're used in a, a real life. Um, you know, it, it's it's similar when you, you know, I don't know if you had the course uh, hermeneutics interpretation of the scripture, we always say no, rule number one is pay attention to the context. And uh, um, the word lion in First Peter chapter 5, when he talks about Satan is like a roaring lion, you know, that has another meaning and implication. And when you look at the book of Revelation chapter, uh, I think it's chapter five, that talks about the line of tribe of Judah is referring to Judah, to uh, Jesus. Um, so context has a very important role in communication because that even that's a form of communication. When you're reading a book, the author is trying to communicate something to us. Uh, Okay, uh, well, brother, that was all I wanted to share. If you have questions or 
something you would like to discuss, I'd be more than glad. Let me also say regarding this, uh, uh, because I know that's part of the, that's a discussion question. Uh, I just wanted you guys to, you know, uh, you know, th this question is, what are the gifts and ability of this woman and how do those in your Christian community tend to talk about the Proverbs 31? So there has two parts. Uh, first, I want you to read these verses and mention the gifts and ability of this woman. And then uh, in in your um, Christian community, how uh, people look at Proverbs 31. Uh, and it's amazing, you know, how the, the Bible has such a, positive view of a uh, woman and a, a godly woman is so highly esteemed, valued. All right, brother. Uh, so remember, you know, order your textbook and remember you're, uh, you're, a, are you a graduate or undergraduate? Undergrad. Oh, okay. Okay. So the graduate student need to make a visit to a cultural center too. Okay. All right, brother. Uh, do you have any other question? No, I think this uh, this topic is very relatable because um, having lived in different culture, you know, I lived in Saudi Arabia for a long time. So the traditions, the culture, the gender roles, all of them are very familiar. Yeah. Good, good, wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad. I hope you you will benefit from this course. All right, then. Can I ask you to end our time with a prayer? Sure. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we can uh, um, that we can use the wisdom that you have provided in the culture, Lord Father, to communicate uh, your knowledge um, so that people can understand better, Lord. And uh, I pray, Father God, Lord, that uh, thank you for this course and thank you for the professor, Lord, that he uh, yes, spend time to make this course relatable and understanding, Father. We thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you for this evening. I pray everything in our life be used for your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Any question you had from for about any of that assignment, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay. All right, brother. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye. Yes.